Oklahoma, 2006. A single father and his only 18-year-old son live together. The father has no idea his son has been battling depression and is on the verge of snapping. All he knows is his son has been acting down lately. He decides to get some beer and have a cold one with his son. Everything's going okay until about an hour in. The son starts getting very emotional and he begins to lash out at his father. And a fight ensues. The 18 year old son roars off to his room, upset and drunk. The father goes to his room and passes out for the night, not thinking twice about it. The next morning, the father gets up. He's about to cook breakfast and he looks around for his son. He's not in his room. He's not in the kitchen. To the man's horror, he looks in his backyard and his son is hanging from a tree. Needless to say, the man is heartbroken. He leaves the house that Abandoned, never to return. And some people in Anadarko know of this house, and they use the backyard as a shortcut, but nobody wants to be caught in that backyard after dark. In 1979, a man named Billy Jean Stout, originally from Marlowe, Stout had been living with Opal and Elmo Gandy for about two years after he was found not guilty of a liquor store break-in because it was decided the confession he gave the police couldn't be admitted. Billie Jean Stout was known to have drinking problems. On July 18th, 1979, Billie Jean Stout came home to the residence and murdered Elmo and Opal Candy with a lead pipe. They were beaten so bad that at first police and, and paramedics had thought it was a high-powered rifle that had been used to kill them. Shocking the community of Anadarko, Oklahoma, Helen Gandy, the widow of Laudis Gandy, who wrote the book Hands of a Killer, has said, Bill came to live with Elmo and Opal. They both thought they could help Bill with his alcoholism and help him get back on his feet. Elmo Gandy put him to work at his burlap sack factory, Cattle Bag, which Laudis Gandy was managing. He helped Stout get a job at a carpet mill working a night shift. Elmo Gandy even got out of bed every night to take Stout to work and picked him up at 8 a.m. Helen says, the Gandys never required any living expenses of him. He started saving his money and he bought him a used car. Helen says this was the beginning of his downfall. He started going back to Marlowe and drinking with his old buddies. Eventually he lost his job and entered the 
Veterans Administration Hospital in Ardmore. Testimony at his trial indicated he would slip out at night to get a drink and was caught trying to slip back in. Kicked out of the hospital, stopped came in a dark robot bus and killed Elmo and Opal. Gandy, says Helen Gandy. Bill went in on them in the early morning and beat them to death with a lead pipe. They were beaten so badly that we were first told they were shot in the head with a high-powered weapon, Helen says. We all did everything we could to help him straighten up his life. Elmo and Opal ultimately did give their lives. Stout was quickly apprehended and convicted of two first-degree murders and given the death penalty. He was sentenced to die January 14th, 1980, but through a lengthy judicial battle in 1991, an appeals court overturned the death sentence. Stout died in McAllister State Prison in December of 1994 at the age of 67. The Gandy Murder House still stands in Anadarko, Oklahoma today and is still rented out. But nobody seems to ever stay for long. Do you blame them? The Lawton Serial Killer Between 1999 and 2003, Five women were murdered in the Lawton, Oklahoma area. All five victims were known prostitutes, and most of the bodies were found nude, dumped in desolate rural areas of southwest Oklahoma. All of the victims were last seen at cheap motels on Cash Road in Lawton. Three of the victims tested positive for cocaine or methamphetamine. Lawton Police Lieutenant Charles Wittes who has worked narcotics and vice in Lawton since 1978, said, All too often we hear the news media refer to these victims as killed prostitutes. These aren't simply prostitutes. These girls are someone's daughter, our mother, our sister, our friend, Wittes continued. These girls are human beings. The killing stopped in 2002, leading many to believe the killer had moved away was sent to prison or had maybe died. The most prominent theory is that the killer was a truck driver because of the multiple state area of the victims. Some believe the killer could have been stationed as a soldier at Fort Sill Air Force Base because it's adjacent to Lawton. In 2004, investigators from Texas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Oklahoma met to compare notes on their respective cases. They came to the conclusion that they were all hunting the same killer, and that would put the victim count to at least nine women across five states. But what do you believe? In Mays, Oklahoma, on a rainy night in 1977, three girls aged 8, 9, and 10 were murdered and left for dead in the woods at Camp Scott Girl Scout Summer Camp. The local jail is gaping with a history of violence named Jean Lee. Roy Hart stood trial for the crime, but was acquitted. Thirty years later DNA testing was ruled inconclusive as the samples were too old. In 1977, Camp Scott was in its 49th year of existence, situated near Snake Creek and Spring Creek near State Highway 82. T. Jean Lee Roy Hart was born about a mile from Camp Scott. He had been convicted of raping two pregnant women but had escaped from prison four years prior. About two months before the murders, during an on-site training session, a camp counselor found her belongings ransacked. 
her donut stolen and inside the empty donut box was a disturbing handwritten note. The author vowed to murder three campers, but because summer camps are rife with ghost stories, the note was treated as a prank and discarded. June 12, 1977 was the first day of camp. Around 6 p.m. the thunderstorm hit and the girls huddled in their tents. Three girls, Lori Lee Farmer, Kate, Doris Denise Milner, 10, and Michelle Hughes, 9, all shared tent number 7 in the Kiowa camping area. Nobody knew it would be the last time they would ever see them alive. The following morning, a counselor made the frightening discovery of three dead girls, found dead in their sleeping bags at a fork in the trail. Shortly thereafter, it was discovered all three girls in tent number seven had been bludgeoned and strangled to death. June 13, 1977 was the last day Camp Scott was ever open. After nearly 50 years of hosting Girl Scouts, Camp Scott closed its doors for good. Jean Leroy Hart was arrested 10 months later at the home of a medicine man and was later tried in March. 1979. Although the local sheriff has said he is 1,000% sure Hart committed the crimes, the local jury acquitted him. The case remains unsolved.